Hey, well, thanks for joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be working on this RCA Victor A23. And I just tested it. If you watched the last video and discovered that it actually works in the condition it's in now. But I think I'm going to change out a couple of these uh, one, two, three, four, maybe four or five capacitors in here, these paper ones, and get rid of those. Even though the set is working, um, those guys are about as reliable as nothing, so I think I'll get them out. And interestingly enough, I'll be able to, to test them, because I guess well, I got a LCR meter now. <laughs> so uh, that sounds like fun to me. Uh, what's not so much fun is the weather report. Here it is late in March. And, uh, son of a gun, if the weather report isn't for snow. Wet snow today, and then snow overnight. Holy smokes. Probably won't be very much, but it doesn't take much at this time of the year. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. So, first thing I want to do is, uh, since these capacitors don't have their values written on them, um, they have a, uh, I think it's a Filco code number. Oh, wait a minute, this one does have its value, 0.05. I'll take that back. 0.05, okay, right off to the start. Let's do this one first, 0.05. There we go. One of the things, that's, uh, things that is cool about shooting these videos is when I say, give me a second, it really does amount to a second on your side. So, okay, so let me get rid of this guy here. And I think, let's see if I can just make this a little more interesting. Clearly, see both both these guys have are 0.05s. And they look identical. No surprises there. It's amazing how uh, in 2D you can be just completely fooled by how things look. Actually, what am I talking about? In 3D here, I get completely fooled. Hotter that one before doing the other one, but I think I'm gonna get the other one done here too. about the other one here. I'll wait. I'm just going to wait. Why would I wait? 
because I don't want to confuse myself here. Even though I'm going to cut this and leave the lead sticking out. Seems like if I can find a way to boob it up, I usually do. So. That's not really true. I shouldn't be so hard on myself. Since it could be there, it certainly has been. Another point oh five.
these black capacitors like this one are pretty unreliable also. But I think after I replace these paper ones, um, the next step is going to be um, to try to align the radio, just see how well it works. Now one of the things I've been thinking about a little bit is, uh, based on some experiences just recently with some radios, is how do you really know when they're performing properly? Good enough is often the, the test. Good enough may fall short of what they're really capable of doing. Good enough can be just fine in the, the minds of the uh, owners of these radios. They really don't plan to make it a light nightly affair to listen to them. It's going to be once in a long while. Some radios actually provide gain information. You could. And that's the radio that got me thinking about this. Okay, two done. These ones are not terribly important. Let's see, this one goes to the phono input. Or somebody might want to try to play their. Uh, their iPod through this radio. Um, so they'd be relying on this capacitor. This one has got a switch here. I'm going to guess that this is the switch that interrupts the radio signal. So if you turn the radio signal off, you can then play your phonograph without hearing the radio. Heard the radio working. There should be, yeah. Sure, of course. Mm, not the best switch in the world. get this to read a, uh, a short. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, it's in. Let's see. I'm reading. There we go. It's just hard to make contact on these lugs. No surprise there. Zero zero two five sounds like point zero zero three to me.
voice capacitor it will only play a role in the radio if somebody actually does plug something in like a phonograph or something like that I'm looking forward to a new piece of equipment that's coming my way. I don't want to say too much more about it. I'm going to have my hands full with it. I think it's going to be the uh, probably the most advanced piece of equipment I've ever used. Nothing that unusual. challenges is fitting it into my little shop here. I spent uh, probably half an hour the other morning before I got up rolling around ideas in my head of where I could put it in here. I think I solved it. Also, a point oh two five, pretty dark. This one's carrying the signal. detector there it is there tone switch tone switch well I'm surprised yeah that's there's the phono socket and the tone switch maybe when you uh, plugged in your record player the tone was crappy throw the switch to compensate. It is a .0025. Well, that's interesting. Not what I thought it was at all. .0025. Could put a .002 or a .003 in there. Don't have that. About it to try to you know parallel up the capacitors or do something like that. To so I think we 
know now why these capacitors are left. Well, I don't know about this one. Don't know why why the last repair guy 30, 40 years ago left those in there. Well, he appears to have replaced quite a few other ones. So, that's all there is in there. So we're good to go. Still can put a new power cord on this. Good to go for an alignment. Find out uh, how well we can get this guy to work. Oh, I was going to test these capacitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do that. That's the funnest part of this whole thing. on hold. There we go. Okay, so that scale is two microfarads. So if we saw one nine 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 that'd be two microfarads. This is supposed to be point oh 
so 0 0.002 should show up. Actually, this is a 0 0.05, so it should see 0 0.05. No, by my reckoning, it's nowhere near that. It's now 200 nanofarad. 200. So zero. Okay, on to the next one. This is also a 0 0.05. here. The other one's nothing. That's radically different. Okay, now it's a point zero zero two five. I think we are in the 200 nano, 0025 is 2.5 nanofarads, 2.5. You really got to get good on the nano pico micro stuff here. Okay, so it's a 20 nanofarad scale. One nine 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 or twenty nanofarads and this should be reading twenty five. It reads basically zero. This one, I gotta go, I go through this in my head every time. Should be reading 2.5, it's reading 3.7. Hard to understand why it would read higher unless there's uh, you know, like a, a leakage or something, and the result of uh, leakage in the capacitor that makes my meter go wonky. Mega ohm scale. Be hard to make a good contact with these crummy leads here. Twenty mega ohm scale. Show any sign of leakage. Okay, these aren't really the best way to do these tests, but it's something. brush my finger there for a minute. I'm not sure why I got a partial reading there for a second. Nothing. Now, just for fun, because this meter is a little new to me. To the capacitor scale. Pick one, I can read 0 0.05 here. One of these uh, molded ones. Try and test it right in the circuit. Could be lots of reasons why this can't be done. I'm going to ignore them all. Say 
point, what should that say? So it's a point zero five. I should read point zero five. It's pretty unnerving. Whatsoever. Pretty well. Uh, that's a fairly big one compared to these smaller ones down here. So they are. in the circuit. I'm not so sure this is valid. The negative sign. The negative sign. Eh? Hmm. And it should be reading point this is the two micro scale, two microfarad scale. Point zero five is what it should be reading. It's reading crazy high. This one, I suspect. I suspect we will see a voltage coming out of it. Believe it or not, and not some leftover charge. 2 volt scale. Minus, it's going up. And you're all screaming, it's bad, man, it's bad. Can a voltage be coming from? This set's not even plugged in, hasn't been turned on. It's nothing residual, because if it was, it would be going down, not up. Let's try this one here. Something similar there. going up too. That's kind of unnerving, isn't it? This one's got a little bit on it. I have a theory behind this. Now this is one I just put in. Please show a zero. If you don't show a zero, I'm really stuck explaining these. Unless you don't see any voltage there. somewhere else. Let's say, hey, how uh, can there be voltages on these capacitors? Let's try some of these ones here. So my theory on this, let's try one of these. This is just right out here on my bench. And there was some 
something left in there, probably from the capacitance test. But look, it doesn't go to zero. It's going to stop around 0.1 volts. Let's try this one here. Now, just to convince myself I'm not loony bins here. Something was stored on it. It's heading to zero. The meter's bleeding down the voltage that was left on this. Why this guy had a voltage on it must be from the last time I used it. Quite a few days ago. Surprising, eh? So what is this telling me? Well, this is telling me that these little guys have turned into batteries reason they're batteries is they have moisture that's gotten inside them. There's nothing hermetically sealed about these anymore. And the moisture has gotten in there and uh, there's some kind of mixed metal situation going on in here. There's probably aluminum foil and these are uh, 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 copper plated, plated with tin, probably tin plated copper leads, something like that. And uh, if you look at your electromotive force scale, you'll see that they are a little different. The uh, copper, the tin, and the foil that's inside there. Really, I can only guess it's aluminum foil. I really don't know. Aluminum is very electronegative. So as long as those things are bone dry, nothing will happen. But when you get a little bit of moisture inside them, they turn into batteries because of the two different... Uh, metals that are in there. And uh, I've been encountering this all the way along. If you've watched enough of my videos, you've seen me do similar tests and discover this voltage. It throws off readings, uh, ohmmeter readings and stuff like that, because ohmmeter is not looking, is not, uh, it's not going to work where there's actually a voltage coming out of that capacitor. And so that's very strong evidence of uh, that the capacitor is going to leak some current. We put it under pressure, maybe uh, 100 volts DC or something like that. It's going to leak some current through it. Um, so there's a certain amount of, uh, of effective resistance going through these now. They're no longer you know, 50 mega ohms, they're something much lower. And I suppose in certain circumstances, the internal voltage of these capacitors can affect high impedance circuits, like maybe a grid circuit. Not so sure that's really the case. But, uh, now the radio has worked despite that, despite that. But I think given this test, I should really get rid of these these guys. Um, there's four of them. I can see one, two, three, and four. Four more to go, so I, I really think that would be a smart move. Um, okay, stop applauding. I know some of you are applauding, <laughs> but I really like to do things on an evidentiary basis, and I think that's that's the evidence right there. So hey, thanks for watching so far. I think I'm gonna have to pick this up later in the day or something like that.